Hi friends, welcome to our first edition YouTube channel. This is part 6 in Azure Data Explorer playlist. In this video, we will discuss about how we can perform our query executions on top of the sample data using Kusto in Azure Data Explorer. Please watch my previous videos in the playlist to get most out of it. In our previous videos, we discussed about what is Azure Data Explorer. We discussed about how to add a sample data, right? We ingested our data. We created a cluster. We created a database. And then we ingested our data into some table. We created a table called Storm Events Table, right? So please watch that to make sense how we can work with Data Explorer so far. So this is like a continuation to previous videos. And in this video, I will be showing you how we can query the sample data. And to query the sample data, I will use some help cluster. So there is something called help cluster, which was provided by Azure Data Explorer team out of the box that anyone can use. In our last video, we ingested some sample data, right? Using Azure Open Blob, something called Storm Events one particular excel csv file we ingested right so we can still work on the same table same database but instead i will show you this as well so what is this help cluster how it look like and this cluster already has so many databases with so much of sample data we can directly use that and this help cluster also has data for storm events tables as well so it is there in sample database let me show you that practically if you are not making sense what I am saying this strom events table and all, please watch my previous video so that you will get most out of it. So let me go to browser here. Uh, in the Azure browser, as I said, we can connect to our Clustlo clusters using a URL called dataexplorer.azure.com, right? So let me open this URL where we open our Azure Data Explorer environment, okay? And if you remember right now, I am under query menu. And this is the cluster which we created for free. And these are the two databases which we created. And our last video, we created this Storm Events table. And here, let me try to query this Storm Events table. So I written only table, remove this, uh, maybe add this type symbol. And I want to take only top 10 rows. So I written this. And now let me hit, hit this run button to execute this query. You see, we are getting all the storm events here and we are getting all the data here, right? You can see that, right? So the same storm events table, whatever you are seeing here, which we inserted from our last video, the same thing will be available under help cluster also. So let me show you how to add any cluster and we will use, we will add a help cluster this time. So here, hit this add cluster button to add any cluster and in this case i want to add something called help cluster that comes out of the box okay so let me hit this add cluster button here so let me hit that once you add here you have to select the connection url and you have to define a display name as well so let me add the help cluster url here https slash slash help dot custo dot windows.net this is the help cluster name and uh, help is the display name which is coming by default let it be i don't want to change and now let me hit this add button to add this cluster the moment i added a cluster you can see i added a help cluster here and if i expand here if you closely observe you can see so much of information here basically so this is the cluster what you are seeing and all this whatever you are seeing all these are databases basically okay and every database will have some data so as I, as i said samples database has table for storm events so let me go inside samples database and let me expand tables also here and here you can see there is something called storm events table and here you have that storm events uh, table also clearly displayed here if i open this all these columns whatever you are seeing here these are exactly same so the storm events what i added in our last query i don't know in me i mean in our last video is exactly same of what you are seeing here which is under 
help cluster okay you can see this is under help cluster so let's try to use this samples database only directly see right now my focus is under samples database from help cluster and here let me minimize this now let's try to use stram events table and here let me try to do the same like sort by maybe start time column start sort by say okay sort sort spelling is wrong here sort by start time column in descending order and then i want to take only 10 rows let me execute this query and see whether it will run or you can see it is giving you let me zoom this here it is giving us the results correctly okay so this is what we are doing now on top of this let me show you some shortcuts as well so let me do one thing uh, let's assume if your query is like this maybe you don't use these five symbols in a next line you are using everything in a single line will this work let me hit and see it will still work but for some reason let's assume you want you have a very big query which is not formatted well and you want to format it then select that query and select shift alt f the moment you do that it formats your query this is one thing and second thing will be once you selected a query you can hit this run button to execute the query or you can hit shift enter the moment you does that it will does the same job it will still execute your query and uh, let's do one thing i want to take only few columns here maybe start time end time and then maybe state column okay so let's uh, how to take only few columns so let me write another query here so what i will be doing here stram so let's use the same query stram events table and from there uh, let's do the same thing sort sort by start time column in descending order and then uh, take only 10 columns okay and uh, sorry 10 rows and then here we can use something called project operator that will select the columns okay so here i want to select only start time comma end time see intelligence is giving me all the column names and then i will use maybe state column okay so i want to take only these three columns so right now when i keep my cursor here you can see entire query is blue highlighted when i hit run it will execute my query and it will give you all my three results and now let's assume this query is fine previously we executed this query if i want to see the results of previous execution of this query then i do i need to run it again no what you can do select the query and then go here top right corner there is something called recall future here so this recall future helps you to show the previous execution results without executing this query actually okay so it won't execute this query again it will show the previous results let me show you that so i am hitting recall now here i selected this query see here and i am selecting here and i am hitting recall the moment i does that it has not executed a query it will directly give me results of my previous query execution from that recall option so you are not putting any compute here to rerun the query okay so this recall option will be very helpful now i am going to this second query here i selected it i will be selecting this and i am selecting recall see it does the same thing now it gives all the three columns okay so this is one thing and another thing we can even render a uh, visuals actually so let me show you what i mean so let's take the same stram events table and from this table let's perform group by state group by state and find out how many uh, stram events are happening for each state so if it is a sql you have to group by state and take the count of that state rows in the table that will give the how many events are happening why because every event every row is one stram event so if if you have california at 10 places in 10 rows that means 10 stram events happen right something like that so to perform group by in Custo, you have to use there is something called summarize operator summarize then use the function so i want to take a count by which column you want to take i want to take by state and this count whatever it gives you can save it in some column name so i will give my column name as like maybe event count equals to 
count of all the rows by states so it will summarize means it will group by state and it will take for each state the count into this column so once i take that what i can do here is i can project what and all columns i want so i what i want i want the state column and also i want to take this event count column so now this query is selected let me hit shift enter to execute the query and you can see for each state what is the strom events count it is giving me here clearly so there are so many rows right so let me take only the states where strom events is greater than 1800 maybe so what i will do here before projecting after group by i will take where event count is greater than 1800 so now let me hit shift enter to execute the query and if you see the results here now we got only few states where we have the event counts greater than 1800 this is fine so now i want to render this data into column chart maybe so how to do that what i can do here is after project use another operator here uh, that operator should give you the column chart so if i uh, let me go to notepad this render operator will help you to does that so let me use render operator and i want to take column chart here so this entire data whatever it is coming that entire data should come in in a column chart visual so let me select the query okay let me select this entire query here and let me hit shift enter to execute this query now if you see i got a clear visual of the same data and when i hover on each column bar i can see the data as well so texas has 4701 events happened and if you see georgia has 1983 so it is very easily i am able to perform the analytics on top of my data and represent the data also in visual right so that is the beauty of azure data explorer so it gives you perform interactive analytics on top of your data you are directly interacting with your data and performing your analytics and that means running your queries to fetch the insights and that data whatever you are getting back that you are able to present even with visuals as well so if you want to see the table representation of it you can navigate to table you can still see the table also okay so i hope now with this video you got a high level idea how you can execute queries on top of the sample data using kusto language in adx thank you for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever i add videos thank you so much